Sometimes it's the disappointment itself that keeps me from even going after my goal because I don't want to deal with that. Redirect your expectations so that you have clear communication to yourself and to others. Disappointment results from setting expectations instead of goals. We didn't feel like we are enough, that we are a disappointment to other people and therefore take on the identity and then we become a disappointment to ourselves. Disappointment occurs so often when we don't look at a big picture and we compartmentalize our lives. When you start to view disappointment as not a result, but as an aspect of feedback, as information as a learning tool, then I feel that's what actually gets us into the next level. So you and I, we go for a lot of things in life, right? We have huge goals, we have smaller, more achievable goals. But one thing we know as we're going after these goals is absolutely for certain and that's disappointment. Because anytime you're going after something you desire, not everything is going to happen for you the exact way you desire it to happen. It's life. It's part of the journey. And how we deal with that disappointment is also part of the journey. And one of the questions we get asked as we're going out and talking with individuals or even when we're coaching is, how do you deal with that disappointment? Sometimes it's the disappointment itself that keeps me from even going after my goal because I don't want to deal with that. I don't desire to feel like I've failed somehow. or. I don't desire to feel like I'm not able to have what I desire. So therefore, I'm not even going to go after it. And that made us think, well, why don't we talk about five tips for dealing with the disappointment? So then you know you're empowered to make your way through the disappointment that will inevitably happen sometimes when you're going after your goal. Because no matter what, you're not going to get your goal if you don't go after it. So that in itself is disappointment, right? Right. I like that. Yeah, it's important to learn how to create a mindset that allows you to move through and actually achieve the goal, no matter how big or small. If we set even small goals and we're still feeling disappointment and that's our repeat cycle, then how are we ever going to achieve the big ones? Yeah. Exactly. And ultimately, disappointment can help you grow stronger, right? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the tips is to understand how, look, you've set for us, sometimes we set goals that are lofty and then we break them down into smaller, more achievable goals. Mm -hmm. But that lofty goal, that huge goal, like let's just say starting this organization, Suivera, which is the larger organization that is what sponsors what we're doing here with Heart Leader Podcast. Um, we have lots of sponsors, but it's the main contributor to what we're doing here. That was a huge lofty goal. And so we had to break it down into smaller step-by-step -step tasks. And sometimes along the way, there were things that happened where we were like, oh, we could do this. And then it didn't pan out. Mm -hmm. And of course, we were disappointed when it didn't. But it taught us something. And we always came to the table with the rest of the team and we said, okay, that didn't work. But what did we learn from it? What could we pull from it to become stronger and then apply? to what is working so that what is working continues to move forward in the best possible way. Mm -hmm. Because yes, that didn't work for a, a plethora of reasons. And it's disappointing. We lost money. We lost time. We lost other resources. It sucks. Mm -hmm. We've all been through that yeah. in some way, shape or form. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
and we don't feel alone because we know we've all been through it. Mm -hmm. What do we gain from it? Do we sit and wallow in it for a long period of time and then kick ourselves deeper into the dirt? Or do we rise up from it, taking something from it, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and it's important to really focus and recognize that disappointment is not a result. When we can have that understanding, then I think these next five tips that we kind of talk about can really fulfill into the next level of what it means to actually achieve our goals, not get in our own way, not get stuck in that. It only has to look that this goal that I want to achieve or we want to achieve needs to look this specific way. And so when you start to view disappointment as not a result, but as an aspect of feedback, as information, as a learning tool, then I feel that that's what actually gets us into the next level. Because a lot of reasons why things, goals specifically, aren't achieved is because we give up on them. Because we don't know how to handle the disappointment. Exactly. But I don't want to disappoint anyone because that was one of the goals. Oh, yes. <laughs> you said the next five. <laughs> and I don't want to set anyone up. <laughs> but it does blend beautifully into another one, which is expectation. Yes. Right? And a lot of times disappointment results from setting expectations instead of goals. Mm. Right? And so those two kind of go hand in hand. When we have expectations, which are maybe goals that we don't communicate or desires that we don't communicate. We just think, huh, who knows what I want? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Well, no, the world doesn't know what you want. The, your business doesn't know what you desire. It takes planning. It mm -hmm. takes strategy. And so when you have these desires for your life, but you haven't really conveyed them, to the people around you, to or even really taking the time to clearly articulate them to yourself. Well, expectations are very, very hard to bring to fruition mm -hmm. because there's really no solid framework around them. Yes. So, of course, you're going to get disappointed if you expect something. But nobody knows what it is. Right. Yeah. I know growing up and still to this day when, when talking to different, different individuals and hearing either what their life goals are or life mission, and they're, they're beautiful. Don't get me wrong. When I hear someone say, I want to make an impact on the world, I mean, that's incredible. There's a lot of other things that you could say that aren't awesome. <laughs> and so the fact that someone is willing to even put any effort into that to make an impact in the world is beautiful. But to your point, it's when you aren't clear with yourself and with those around you and with the universe, it's really hard for all of it to, um, to coalesce and, and, and flow in your favor, in the favor of, of that. Because it's not even your favor. If your desire is to impact the world, that's not just a selfish desire. That's, uh, that's a community desire, right? Yeah. And so that means there has to be multiple parties in play to work together in collaboration in order to actually allow that to happen. And so if you're saying, I want to impact the world, but then you're not giving how or why or when or what, then yeah, I mean, to some degree it is, it is selfish because only you know. And even then, do you really know? And so that's where it takes that extra little step, what I feel you're talking about taking the time to write it down. You know, there's, we all are aware of business plans, but you know, what about a business plan for our personal goals, yes. right? I mean, so there are things you can do, whether it's a personal mission statement or uh, achievable goals, creating an effective timeline, you know, all these things that we can do that we can actually sit down and write and practice. I mean, you and I spend a lot of time when we talk, uh, you know, we've brought up that we, we go on walks together and all that. And it's just so it's so nice that we continually craft our conversation, not like scripted. And that's really, really important to understand. It's not like we're sitting yes. here scripting how we are going to talk. Specifically, it's getting clear and concise with what we truly believe in so we can articulate it well so that we know 
that other people know and that the universe know. And so there is a consistent flow and cohesion around what the goal actually is so that it can be delivered. Yeah, absolutely. And we're not saying your entire life has to be a strategy, right? Yes. Because then there's <laughs> no room for fun. <laughs> but you, having expectations of other people to meet something that you yourself haven't taken the time to understand will always lead you to disappointment. I can mm. say that with 100% certainty. Yes. Yeah. Because you don't even know what you desire. So how can somebody else meet that for you? Mm. And then it just creates animosity and all of these other feelings that will leave you unsatisfied. And it will be the same in your business or career life or job. So it is important to do what you just said, which is just really get clear. And even if you don't have the clarity, if you have a partner or a friend or a family member who's willing to sit and just talk that through with you mm. to get that clarity, it doesn't have to be, oh, I'm going to sit at my type or my computer right now, typewriter. <laughs> Who has typewriters anymore? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to sit at my keyboard and I'm going to write this out. You know, that doesn't work for everyone. But the more clarity that you can get, the fewer expectations you place on yourself and on other people. And that helps so much. And sometimes in order to do that, you get to step number or you get to a third tip, which is looking at the big picture. Disappointment occurs so often when we don't look at a big picture. And we compartmentalize our lives and we think, oh, well, here's my family life. Here is my dating life. Here is my job. Here is just this part of my spiritual self growth. Everything is just so compartmentalized, but we're not compartmentalized. We are one being. Hmm. And Though we may have different parts of ourselves that we enjoy, we can't compartmentalize ourselves. So the moment our job bleeds into our social life, suddenly we're disappointed because we're losing out on our social interaction because of our job. Oh, that job. Oh, I hate that job. Mm. But is it really that or is it that you haven't pulled up and looked at the big picture that is your life to look at okay my job funds my social life and i am so blessed to have a job that provides me with the income to have this great social life and so i'm not disappointed that i'm getting extra hours how blessed am i to be getting extra hours so that now when this wave of busyness at my job seems to calm down, I'm going to have all this extra money. And then the wave in my social life can pick up and I can have more fun. So let me pull up and look at the whole picture instead of being disappointed that I'm missing out on this one sliver of time. I'm excited now that I'm pulling in this extra amount so that I can have more fun. That's so beautiful. Looking at that big picture like that, just it gets you out of the cycle, yeah. which is so important because we find ourselves in those kind of cycles most of the time unintentionally, right? And we're so laser focused in one area and we kind of get in our own way or become blind to the other things. It happens in relationships all the time. You know, when we are, are we so focused on needing to be right? You know, because we're afraid of disappointment, we're afraid of disappointing our partner or our family member or our friend or, you know, any kind of relationship in that sense. Um, you know, are we like, do we need to be right so that we can show that we have value in the relationship? You know, and, and otherwise we'll be disappointing the other person or people. Uh, and so it's when we get in our own head about that and then we start to get in our own way. That creates, in and of itself, creates the very thing we're seeking to avoid, which is disappointment. 
And so when we can pull up and look at the big picture and say, okay, you know, the value of this relationship is, is far more important than the need for me to be right in this moment. Yeah. And so we can step back because a lot of, a lot of these arguments or disappointments because of not communicating the, the desired expectations, right? Yeah. Occurs because, because we're not, we don't know exactly what we desire. We don't, we aren't communicating well to the other person or people given the situation. And, and then we tend to need to have some kind of like, we need to be right or correct, or we need to be, have more power in the relationship or all these other things, these dynamics that truly don't matter. You know, these are, these are egoic perceptions that aren't the truth in the core of a relationship, which is mutual respect and love. And when you can view from that perspective, then all those things start to fall away. And then the expectations start to fall away because we start recognizing that the value we bring is not an egoic value, but the value in the fact that we are being love and we are in a trusting and respectful relationship and when two can meet at that level or more if it's like a whole a family or a community i mean the power is endless hi i'm amber thank you so much for watching if you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are it helps us more than we can possibly say yeah so when you look at those, the three tips that we've already talked about and you use them in conjunction, mm -hmm. you use disappointment as a strength builder mm -hmm. and you understand that you can grow from it. You look at how disappointment is showing you where you have expectations mm -hmm. and you begin to, using it as a strength, you begin to frame around those expectations and turn them into true goals or strategies so that other people understand using communication to structure around them. And you begin to look at the big picture, right? You look at your life as a big picture. Like how does everything flow in together instead of being disappointed that one area or another or one thing has occurred, you look at it as the whole narrative. Mm -hmm. Then you begin to not sit. Of course, you're going to be disappointed at times, but you're not going to sit in disappointment for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And that goes to tip number four, which is feel your feels, right? Don't believe that if you're disappointed, you should just get over it. Mm. And I have heard that often. It's like, why are you disappointed? Just get over it. Yeah. Well, no, I'm a human <laughs> <laughs> and I'm allowed to feel disappointed when I have done all of those three and something doesn't go as planned. Mm -hmm. I have put a lot of effort and a lot of myself into this. And so I'm going to have that human emotion of being disappointed. And if I suppress that, then that human emotion is going to turn into a feeling and that feeling might be resentment. Mm. And I don't want that. Mm -hmm. So I would prefer to sit with my feeling of disappointment and allow that to be what it is for the length of time that it is. But if I've done the other little tips, then that feeling will probably be a lot shorter. And I'll be like, okay, I get it. I don't need to feel disappointed for a long period of time because now I can use that as strength mm -hmm. and it'll hit me and I'll go, oh, okay. So I'm feeling disappointed. What is it showing me? How can I? turn that into my strength and look at what I need to do next. But it doesn't mean that I don't have the feeling and I don't allow the feeling to be with me. So feel your feels. Mm -hmm. Like don't attempt to suppress it. Let it be. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's going to just linger and it's going to linger and then you're going to start feeling resentment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I feel like that leads to even a bigger aspect if we, if let's say we continue that cycle of suppressing. 
what happens, and we've talked about this in other aspects, like I am disappointed becomes an identity. Yeah. And it flows into all aspects of our lives. And oftentimes it stems from something where, I don't know whether it's a childhood or experience throughout life, that we didn't feel like we are enough, Mm -hmm. that we are a disappointment to other people and therefore take on the identity and then we become a disappointment to ourselves. And so it's, this is a, a, a far more powerful and deep, I don't know if I should say issue, but it, it, it can, I mean, yeah, it really it can, can be. Um, and so, and I feel like oftentimes we don't realize, trust me, I've been there. Like I didn't realize I was in it because I started being disappointed by every single thing and what was the common denominator, it was me. And until I had that understanding that it was tied to my self-worth because I was creating an identity around me disapp- being afraid of disappointing everyone around me uh, because that was the way that I felt loved when they were, you know, when they're approving of, of someone's very approving of it or I met an expectation, then I felt love. And so then I was, I was feeling love for myself through others and wow was that a a, like mind-blowing experience to understand how that led me in the exact opposite of what i desire to experience in life and so when we can take that step back and allow ourselves to feel the feels so that we don't suppress and allow this and make it become our identity long term we can really catch it up front like you say one of the best ways to know you're actually doing something well and you can measure it is by, you know, how how quickly are you doing it? For example, um, if you're feeling these, like, are you in a constant state of disappointment across all levels of your life, or are you starting to feel maybe a couple months now versus your entire life, or when something happens, or is it a couple weeks, or is it now a couple days? Is it you know a couple hours? Is it minutes? You know, that's, that's the, the better that you get at this, you'll start to recognize that your disappointment is, um, is fleeting. It is inexperienced. It is temporary. Yeah. It is not your identity. It is not who you are, which are two very, very different things. Yeah, such a great point. And sometimes hearing it versus experiencing it is such a vast contrast, right? Yeah. And I know I experienced that. You know, I read about it. I I navigated my way through a bunch of different cultures that would talk about the concept of, you know, the shorter duration of feelings mm. versus emotions and it's embedded in so many like Vedic tradition and many of the traditional Chinese or Eastern philosophies. And I would sit and I'd be like, oh, that sounds lovely. Sounds so lovely. And then the more you practice it, the more it actually becomes your reality. And it takes practice, like anything. When we talk about that, like an athlete doesn't become one of the top in their sport by just walking onto the field and going, I'm the best. (laughs) I've got this. Um, Anyone, a chef doesn't become the top in the, in their culinary field by just walking in with a knife one day and going, I can cook. Right. And it's the same with this, no matter how much we hear about it until we begin to practice what it takes to feel our feels and not suppress them and then allow them to flow through us, not get over them, Mm -hmm. which is really just shoving them down so we can walk over top of them. Right. That's what it means to get over it. Yeah. It's like building a bridge over something. You're just shoving it down so that you can walk over it. Hmm. That's not helpful. You need to make your way through it, whether you have to bulldoze through it, whatever it takes. We have to get through what we're feeling. And sometimes in the beginning, that takes longer. Mm -hmm. It takes longer and it's okay. 
but then you're through it and you don't have to keep carrying that baggage around because that baggage gets heavy the longer we carry it. And if we allow ourselves to just sort through what's in that bag and say, "Eh, you know what, I don't need this and I don't need this and I don't need this, then we are actively choosing what we keep because sometimes we do want to keep some things, even if they hurt, because those make us stronger. Even some of the disappointments will make us stronger and we don't necessarily want to get rid of them all, right? Right. Um, We learn from them and so we hold on to them, but not everything we want to hold on to and we need to carry a lighter suitcase. So I think it's important to note this one and to really feel those feels so you choose what you're turning into emotions and holding on to, Mm. right? And once you do that, then the fifth and final tip that I find incredibly helpful is to get moving, right? Because if you do have some feelings that take feelings of depression, disappointment that take a little longer to get your way through like instead of a bulldozer you need a bulldozer a dump truck and like everything you can find (laughs) you need a whole cleanup crew then you have to get moving so that you can get back into life you can get re-engaged and so you have to find things that light you up again Mm. that really get you re-engaged and counterpoint that disappointment and help you focus on just re-engaging and reigniting in life. Right. right? Yeah. I mean, we've all been there, whether it's, you know, uh, we, we had a relationship breakup, you know, that was disappointing. Maybe you saw it going somewhere and it ended up not. Or, you know, we wanted that, um, that promotion or your dream job and then just and you didn't get it and you saw you saw the picture you saw what it could be and it didn't achieve, it didn't happen right um you know same with sports you know there's it can happen in every aspect of our lives school etc um and so it's hard because you want to be Those, uh, yeah, as we're saying, the importance of feeling your feels is like, I mean, yes, you are human and, and it's important to have those, but moving forward is such a key aspect. And, and oftentimes it's, it's not a, it's not a lack of desire to, to want to move on. It's, it's what do I do next? Because I just had a clear vision of what I thought I saw the next five, 10, 15, or even 20 years of my life could be. And now just when you know it felt like my legs got kind of off underneath me you know it's like everything that i knew you know i had that with golf i grew up playing golf i thought i was gonna be a professional golfer when i got injured it was like oh everything that i've been planning for for at that point you know just 21 years of my life yeah. you know give or take a few years obviously i didn't play right and i was born but you know so yeah, let's call it nine, you know. came out with a golf club <laughs> yeah, in your yeah. hand <laughs> let's call it a good 15 plus years you know which that's still a long, that's a vast majority of my life at that point. You know, that's what I knew. That's what I had set and, and boom, gone in one instant. Right. And I felt lost. I, I felt like I wanted to do something more, but I was like, I don't even know where to begin. And so I think that's where this final one is so, so important and, and critical is to remind ourselves of, of what we are passionate about. That some result like that we place going back to our very beginning of this, right? that when we place disappointment as a result, then that's the experience we're going to have. The disappointment doesn't have to be a result. The experience I had felt very disappointing, and I was making it a result until I realized it was the best thing that ever could have happened to me. I mean, sure, I could have gone on and played golf, but would it got me to where I am today? Absolutely not. And I am so much happier than I ever was then. And so it's, we never know, and that's why it's so important not to get in our own way. And not to have this laser focused idea that it's only going to look this one way when we do something. So be open, be willing to explore your heart and your feelings and, you know, redirect your expectations so that you have clear communication to yourself and to others 
and that you take time to reflect on what all of these aspects mean. And so then that can help you understand your what you're passionate about, what lights your fire, what else is possible as an unlimited being in this world that you can, if your goal is to do something like make an impact, well, what can you make an impact? Can it be as simple as opening the door for someone? That might impact their world in that day. They might have the worst day possible and you never would know. But just by opening them, it made them feel seen, heard, and got in that moment. And that could be the first time they felt that in months or years for all you know. And that could light them up. Oh, well, good. You just made an impact. So if you apply that into every little thing that you do, you're going to compound into making a tremendous impact in your life and to those around you. And so there is, there are so many ways to get up and get moving and remind ourselves of the light and passion within us. We just need to be willing to take that first step and, and recognizing that we are not, our identity, our identity is not tied to this disappointment, but we are, each one of us is an incredible gift to this world. And let's explore that. Yeah. And I know how easy it is to feel like we're a disappointment, like mm -hmm. individually, I'm a disappointment. Um, and we do need tools mm -hmm. to help us pull out of that tailspin. And I want to continue to provide those because it doesn't matter who we are. Like, I've done a lot to assist myself in pulling out of that tailspin, and I still find my inner critic attempting to tell me. Well, you just disappointed them by not doing X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. You're a disappointment, right? And there is a distinct separation between you've disappointed someone and the leap to you're a disappointment as a result, mm -hmm. right? And for some reason, our brains and that little inner critic inside loves to take the action of disappointing someone and turn it into your a disappointment, that identity that you were talking about. And if we don't have tools to stop that in its tracks, then we do start to wear it like a badge. Like our own identity button. I'm a disappointment. And especially when we've disappointed people that we love our parents, our partners, our closest friends. And maybe they haven't even said, You've disappointed me. Right? We infer that we've disappointed them. And suddenly we've got the biggest button that we can possibly wear and we've put it on and we think the whole world is viewing it everywhere we go. I'm a disappointment. And we're toting that totem around like it's our self-identity. And we have to be willing to take that thing off mm -hmm. and know that just because we didn't meet a request by someone or simply because we feel like we failed to meet an expectation and someone communicated that to us that that just by default makes us a disappointment mm -hmm. and using techniques like this or others that you find can help you create that separation between the action and your identity and shut that inner critic up yeah. be like Sh -sh shut it <laughs> zip it <laughs> yeah so to to Beautiful. me that's a key point because it's still i don't care how long we've been practicing these things it still happens yeah. and we have to be vigilant yeah yeah practice is a daily effort mm -hmm. and so the more that we can realize that it's just continual one of the things that I really like is, is the idea that when we pay attention to something, we're literally like buying that moment, right? 
And so what do we want to buy into? What do we want to invest in? Is maybe the better way to say it. And so if we can invest into things that bring up, lift us up versus pull us down, then the compound effect is that we are going to reach what we desire far more than the other way. And so um, it's important to remember that the reason why we practice is like us paying attention. Every time we practice, it's a, it's a reinvestment into what we desire to experience in our lives. And so that's why I think these five tools are a great way to integrate practices into our daily life as, our, as we invest in ourselves on a regular basis to become the, the individual that we desire to be and to make the impact that we desire to make and to live the life that we know is possible through love. And we have so many of these tools on our podcast. Yeah. So if anyone's listening to this and desires to soak in more of them, we encourage them to go and listen to more episodes of the Heart Leader Podcast. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're still doing, uh, uh, we're, we're launching our, our community. And so, you know, join the wait list. It's completely free. Uh, as we unfold this, we'll be letting people in little bits at a time just to kind of really hone this in and do this really right. But we have a ton of amazing information there. Are lots of courses that really focus on body, mind, emotion, and spirit, everything that we're teaching like we are today. Um, and we have other ex expert guides coming in sharing beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. information that's so incredible. It's so valuable. I mean, people have paid lots of money for this information and this will be all included in here. And so, and then they'll be coming in and doing live coaching on a regular basis. So yes, if this is something that aligns with you and uh, you know, resonates and something uh, that you feel would really help you in your life, uh, just click the link below, uh, join the wait list, and we'd love to have you in the community.